What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today's video on distribution methods is gonna blow your mind. We're gonna take a look at all of these different distribution methods. We're gonna check out their efficacies and we're gonna see what the data shows is the best. But before you just jump straight to the data that's in the caption below and use it for your own whatever, I need you to listen to all that I have to say. It's very important and there's also some speculation I'll offer at the end that I think is gonna be a little bit more helpful for you to understand what we're seeing. In one single session, I pulled about 100 double shots of espresso. So I used a single batch of coffee that was roasted all at once, single origin, all in one temperature, one humidity. And so I made sure it was all good. It took me multiple hours. So obviously I was up late into the night and it's, you know, that's not unusual for me. I have issues sleeping. And I'm sure a lot of you do as well. It's a common side effect of these types of crazy people like you and me who are obsessive about coffee. Now, this actually leads me to a short segment by today's sponsor, which is Better Help. I've struggled with insomnia and some other things for many years. And a lot of that is, you know, related to the anxiety and stress that a lot of us are feeling, especially under the current economic duress of the world and just all the responsibilities that we have. And it's not a fun time. And talking to someone can often help. I know it's helped me greatly. It's helped my wife greatly. And I know it's helped a lot of my friends greatly as well. BetterHelp is an awesome online resource that is very affordable, wherein you get matched to your own therapist after answering just a few simple questions. And you're able to have either group therapy sessions or single therapy sessions. You can take notes in the app. And in the end, you're just trying to better your mental health. It helps with your sleep, it helps with your day-to-day -day operations, it helps with your communication with other people and your relationships in general, and it helps with your relationship with yourself. And if you are interested in trying out BetterHelp today, I highly recommend you check out the link in the description below, which is www.betterhelp.com slash Lance Hedrick. You'll get 10% off your first month with this, and I think it's something that a lot of us could definitely use. Full transparency, obviously it does help the channel when you click that link, so I don't want that to be a hidden type of thing. Thanks BetterHelp for sponsoring the video and let's get into uh, some extraction nerdery. Thanks So Coffee Roasters here in Porto. They donated a couple of kilograms for this testing. First off, we have the Swarx WDT tool. Obviously you could use really any WDT tool, but the idea with this is to isolate manual WDT as one of the methods. I have 0.35 millimeter acupuncture needles on this. I was doing a spirographic pattern, what I call the moon and earth technique. So I was doing spins from the very bottom and slowly coming up doing little circles in a revolution. And then right after, because that bed was fluffed up, I gave it one firm tap on the table. As we saw in my previous video linked right there, this gives me the most consistent extractions. And so I double tamped using the decent. Next, we have the Moonraker, which is automatic tool in a way, I guess, where you kind of spin it and all these different size needles are going in a spirographic pattern, like a watch kind of with those gears throughout the bed at miscellaneous depths. I took it in the portafilter and then I would do half turn, half turn, that's one, half turn, half turn, two. And I did that all the way to 10 at this cadence. One, two, one, two, one, two, all the way to 10. Now I'll give it a firm tap, same way as with the WDT, and then I'll double tamp it. This is the distributor previously known as the OCD. It has these four fins on the bottom. I set it to a depth to where it almost fully compressed the puck. I left a couple of millimeters of tamping because this is how I see most people using it. I would take my grounds after I dosed it, I would put it in the basket, and then without touching it, I would put the NCD in. One, two, three, four, five, six double tamped it and we're good to go. We have this 3D printed spirographic tool, which I have linked below where I got this from. This has a knob on the top and in the same way as the Moonraker, it goes in a spirographic pattern using 3D printed gears. I did 10 revolutions on this. So starting with the knob here, I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, very simple. This has 0.24 millimeter needles on it. After I was done with all the revolutions, I gave it a simple tap, then double tamp. This right here is the auto comb. You put it on the portafilter, you lock it in onto the flaps, and then you push the needles down into the bed. Now this is not spirographic. They have a predictable pattern. With this little rib column in the middle, you put your hand on it and you go the full distance of your hand, one, two, three. 
You don't want to go too fast because you can shoot the grounds out to the edges, which can cause issues. You don't want to go too slow because it's not being as effective as it otherwise could be. You do two to three of those. I tried out both and saw there was no real difference, at least statistically significant difference. Then I gave a slight tap and a double tamp. And then finally, we have the Weber Workshop's Blind Shaker. This is literally just a dosing cup. You dose grounds into here, you lift this out, you know, you tap the grounds out into your portafilter. So what I did with this is I would grind, weigh, put it in here, I would put the lid on, I shook kind of in this circular way, and the idea was I was homogenizing the grounds, and I did that for five seconds. Some of the grounds would cake up in the lid, so I'd just tap, tap, tap to make sure all the grounds got into the actual bed, and then I'd take out the bell, knock it into the basket. So I just tapped a little bit to ensure that it was level, and then double tamped. And then the last thing I did was horizontal tapping. Took the dose, put it in my basket, no distribution, no shaking, just tapping it until it settled down and was level. I used the Weber Workshops EG1, and it's because I found it to be the most consistent grinder out of all of my arsenals when I'm doing testing. And yes, I've tried a ton of different grinders. As far as being able to keep a static grind setting, and as far as having the least amount of retention without having to do anything crazy, this has been the most consistent for me. So I use this with the Core Burrs. I did not direct dose into portafilters. This is why context is so important. I did not do that. And it's because I wanted to be as anal as possible on getting all of my measurements. I'd keep my portafilter in the machine to make sure it was hot, and then I would grind into this dosing jar. Then I would pop out the basket momentarily while it's still hot, I'd wipe it down, and I would put it on my Akaya Pixis, which is accurate to 0.05 grams. And I would make it exactly 20.00 grams with a 0.05 gram accuracy. Then I would place it in here, and then I would do the distribution. Since I'm dosing all of them into here, there is inherent distribution once I lift this bell. It's gonna be better than direct from a grinder. Whenever you're grinding direct from a grinder, it tends to pick a side or to over concentrate in a certain area, and that's really hard to undo. This is automatically giving you a better distribution than if you were to do nothing at all. If you were to just grind into a portafilter, tap and tamp, versus grind into this, release, tap and tamp, this is automatically gonna do a bit better. Some of these results will be different on a grind direct to portafilter setup. My first ever coffee job, we received coffee from a roaster that wanted us to feature them. And I was eight months into being a barista, I knew nothing about coffee. And I was dialing in their coffee on our Mazer Majors. And I remember only half of the bottom of the basket was being saturated with the coffee. And I was really confused because that didn't happen with our normal coffee. And I just chalked it up to, well, it must be the coffee because when I pull our coffee, it doesn't happen. Well, what was actually happening is that Mazer heavily, heavily favors one side of the basket when you're grinding into it. And no matter the amount of horizontal tapping I would do, it was not distributing the grounds properly enough to overtake that preference the grinder was giving. Now, it wasn't happening to our normal coffee because it was such a darkly roasted coffee that it wasn't experiencing as much static buildup. But this newer coffee was quite light and it was experiencing a lot more static on the exit. This is just kind of an example of how drastic grinding into portafilters can be. Typically, on-demand grinders have a lot more clumping, and so some of these techniques will be better for grinders that have a lot more clumping. We're using the Unica Pro set to 93 degrees Celsius with a pre-infusion, moves to full infusion at six bar. We're using a flat nine bar profile. All of our different espresso machines are gonna have different water debits, and that's going to skew testing quite a bit as far as how that puck is initially experiencing that work first water flow. So what I did with the Unica Pro is it has this thing called a P-factor, which kind of talks between the flow rate and the pressure early on in pre-infusion, and so this helps to negate inconsistencies from machine to machine. So it has kind of a pre-infusion period prior to hitting flat nine bar until the end of the shot. So my shot times are close to 36 to 42 or so seconds, which seems abnormal, but in reality, this allowed me to focus more on the efficacy of extraction because we see in our data that there's no real co uh, correlation between time and extraction yield. Opted to use a VST basket so we can see what is a more real world experience for those of you at home and in cafes.
Once I got to what I could do on my Google Sheets, I, I sent it to both uh, Dr. Gandhi and Dr. Smarke, and I was like, okay, what I'm seeing seems kind of wild. Um, help me know what I can say with confidence on these data. Simo immediately said, wow, this is great data. And Jonathan was like, this is incredibly interesting. I'm a little scared to say it because I think that there's gonna be a lot of uh, backlash. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is similar to the niche video I made about two years ago. There's, there's a fear here, uh, but I'm just presenting you what I got over eight shots of each and what is statistically significant from those results. And then I'll offer a few speculations. What we can say with significance, with statistical significance, is the highest extracting out of all these was just using the blind shaker. Yes, this statistically significantly was 0.7% higher than the majority of the other options. It was Insane. Dr. Smirke told me they use in the Zurich lab when they're doing all these studies, they use just the blind shaker. They don't fool around with WDT in their lab. They just shake and they tamp and they go and they say it's very consistent. And actually Doug Weber at Weber has been preaching that this is all you really need for a long time. He told me this years ago and I just never really believed him. And the reason is because when you shake, you're kind of caking those grounds. It's antithetical to what you think you would need. But in reality, it's giving you the most efficient extraction. How can we eat the highest extraction? No, that's not what this is about. It shows us what is most effective as, at extraction because as I said, we didn't see any statistically significant and with any confidence of correlation between time and extraction yield. You would think at the 40 second mark, you would be hitting as much extraction as possible. So a little bit more time should aid in a little bit more extraction, a little bit less, a little bit less extraction. But in reality, that wasn't really affecting the extraction yield. So we can somewhat confidently say that the big biggest difference from these results is the efficacy of water flow through the puck. This one just won across the board on extraction yield and on consistency. Pretty insane when you're looking at those graphs. And of course, I have the raw data you can access as well on a hyperlink down below. How is it that the autocomb extracted the least? How is it that my manual WDT was a little bit less than my horizontal tapping? Well, that's why I said context is so important. I think that in and of itself is doing enough positive distribution that it is affecting and skewing what is actually coming out. I think that on a commercial grinder or a, an on-demand grinder where you're grinding direct into portafilter, there are enough clumps that it is necessary to do some sort of extra distribution to even that out. And this is where I think arguably the auto comb and the Moonraker and those things can help to redistribute that base to an acceptable level. Arguably, this is already doing a better job than that. If we were to add the auto comb or the Moonraker or something to this and did a full redistribution, we're gonna harm what this is already doing. The NCD consistently extracts half a percent to one full percent less than just tapping. I've never seen a study say otherwise, let's say that. But in this, it was pretty much the same as tapping. When I was dumping it in, the bottom layer was already pretty well distributed. And so all this was doing was just kind of compressing the top a bit. All my tapping was doing was settling the top a bit. So I wasn't really messing up the bottom with needles. But with these other ones, and the reason they per didn't perform as well is because that bottom was already distributed pretty well by just dosing it using this magic tumbler. And the easiest way to prove that is the fact that NCD performs so well here, because normally it doesn't. But I think it's because it's doing almost what horizontal tapping is doing. It's not affecting the bottom layers. The bottom layers are already good. And the reason there's so much criticism on this in cafes is it's not doing anything to the bottom layers. So from a direct to grinder, those bottom layers are already messed up. This isn't helping it. In fact, it's just compacting that bad bottom layer and it's creating bad shots or lower extracting shots. I never advocated for going direct to port filter because I always saw that there was more inconsistencies than when I dosed into something. And you can see me saying this on miscellaneous forums and in past videos. Granted, I would always WDT afterwards just a bit because I didn't like the look of caking, but it seems that I am likely unsettling it a bit with extra WDT. Or you have something like Mount Koenig's little tin cup, which can fit directly into your 58 millimeter port filter You can put it like this. You can shake and this will likely help in a similar way. And maybe you try just surface level WDT, but what I'm seeing is the caking I'm seeing in my that blind tumbler, it didn't affect it. Every time I did it, I thought this isn't gonna pull well. And it always did. It was always giving me the highest and best and most consistent extraction. 
maybe we've been going overkill with WDT, unless you have a clumpy grinder, or unless you are intent on going direct to portafilter, in which case it probably is pretty helpful. What Doug was telling me is he actually prefers to use the Moonraker after doing the shake with this, and just doing two twists, nothing intense, nothing to upset the grounds, just enough to kind of settle the grounds into place prior to tamping. And maybe that would be the same with kind of like surface level WDTing after you use the blind shaker. This all also depends on your setup. I can only speak with what I have found to be the most consistent setup for my testing that these are the results and this is how it works. And then I'm offering speculation on top of that. I'm curious what you think. Is this frustrating to you or is this, you know, enlightening? Is this like, oh, a breath of fresh air, maybe we have been overcomplicating things and we don't need all of that? Or is this like, I want to try this out myself? Well, if you do, Please let me know. Dr. Gagne has offered to create graphs for anyone who wants to send a significant sample size the way that I did with like 60 shots or so. But just make sure you're using a quality coffee that's single origin and preferably a single batch. And uh, yeah, start pulling shots and make sure that you have a consistent methodology as you're pulling it with some pretty precise gear and, and share that because I would love to expand upon this. But I think for now, that's everything that I have. I hope it was helpful. I hope that you learned something and I hope that this leads to you brewing some better coffee. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for sitting through and listening to all of the methodology and context. Again, you can check out everything below as well as my Patreon, which is really helpful when people join it. Subscribing really helps. Uh, and you can check out my second YouTube where I rant on all this stuff. But in the Patreon, I you know, do a lot of giveaways through competitions. It'd be cool if you went and joined there. And we have a rumbling Discord where we talk about uh, things like this. But anyway, I think that's about it. So I hope that you brew something tasty today. And cheers.